All right, live from Channel Partners, CVTV, and today we have Telstra with us. We actually have Noah Drake. Noah is the Vice President of Customer Solutions. How are you doing today, Noah? Doing great. It's great to be here. Uh, Noah, it is so great to be here. The energy is electric. What, what's it like to be on the floor? Gosh, you know, after two years, it's amazing to be back and to see the energy and excitement that people are bringing. I think just you couple the fact that uh, people have been kind of in front of a computer screen for the last 24 months and then, you know, they're now being able to see each other face to face and kind of rekindle some of those old friendships and relationships. It's awesome to see. So I love to be part of it. Well, obviously, Telstra has a lot kind of going on there. What are some of the strategies for uh, market expansion and new technology development? Absolutely. Um, for Telstra, it's something that we're looking at really closely. And um, over the coming years, you know, we're going to have a very deliberate focus on new markets in particular. There's some markets here around the United States uh, adjacent to us, like Canada, um, parts of Latin America that are extremely interesting, and we're seeing a huge amount of development. In, um, and that development is leading to technologies that uh, you know, may have been unavailable to those regions in the past, and we're looking to kind of be on the, the cutting edge of, of, of leading that charge. So those new markets, and then we have also have a very deliberate focus on broadening our product portfolio. So as, as technology changes and turns over, you know, every three years or so is what they say, um, Telstra is looking to be a thought leader in that and broaden that por uh, portfolio to be able to, to deal with things like hybrid work environment, digital transformation, some of those things that we're now starting to see in the industry that are, are must-haves. And so as we invest in things like not only our underlying subsea network, which is one of the you know, lead leaders in Asia, um, but also things like uh, uh, networks where we need hybrid work environments, hybrid cloud, um, things like that. So it's it's pretty interesting time for us. Uh, we recently launched something called the Telstra Octagon, which is a low latency platform connecting some of the main financial exchanges around the globe um, at the lowest latency between the A and B ends uh, available. So that's something we're really excited about. We're also really excited about the investments we're making in our satellite product portfolio, um, ground stations, things like that. So that we're kind of all over the place, but it's 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 great to be out here. Well, you talk about broadening the portfolio. Uh, could you talk a little bit about the national expansion? I know there's been a lot of buzz there. Yeah, so we're looking to um, get into the, the SASE space. Uh, we're very strong on our SD-WAN profile in Asia, and we're looking to bring that here to the Americas. Um, we've started to see some success in, uh, in basically connecting you know, the, the Asian needs that, that U.S. companies may have. Um, and, and, and into Canada as well. So it's, it's kind of something that I think is going to continue to permeate and take shape over the course of the coming year, um, but something that I think you know, we're positioned well to be in the market for. Well, that's really interesting. Uh, how has the uh, pandemic influenced the strategies with the international channel partner base? Yeah, so the pandemic has been something that has completely accelerated some of the technologies that have been in motion. And we've coupled with um, the fact that there's just market challenges, the economy, things like that, it's created this dynamic environment where we need to be flexible. And our partners have, have understood that and, and they're, they're bringing that flexibility to market and we're trying to support that as best we can. So being able to work from home, right, that's the biggest thing that we're starting to see is, you know, remote work is becoming the norm. Um, and so it's not how do we survive that norm, but how do we thrive in it? And so we're working on things like the hybrid work environment where we're, you know, able to, to be flexible between, you know, finding access to the VPN through your own uh, home office or whether you're coming in and needing to throttle a bandwidth for that time. Um, it's important that people have that flexibility and that they have a reliable connection globally because we're working in a global environment more so than ever before. And so when you think Asia or you think places uh, like China that are hard to access, and Telstra has positioned ourselves well to be able to serve our customers in those areas, whether that's a remote or an office environment. Well, that's very interesting. Uh, could you talk about the Adaptive Networks portfolio specifically and how it's uh, best suited to uh, adapt to changing needs? Yeah, so that Adaptive Networks portfolio is our way of just continuing to accelerate the momentum that was driven by the pandemic. So giving uh, remote workers flexibility, uh, giving companies flexibility where they can not only uh, leverage things like our SD-WAN offering, but they also can rely on zero trust and security and some of those things at the edge that are becoming must-haves for the modern workplace. And so as companies go through digital transformation, they begin to modernize their workforce. We're hoping that, that partners and, and customers can come alongside and, and see Telstra as kind of those, those safe 
safe hands that are able to help shepherd that. Um, and, and some of the technologies that we're investing in are, are, are designed to facilitate that experience. Uh, what do you see as the biggest challenges for 2022 and even beyond? Some of the biggest challenges that we're personally experiencing is because of such a, an increase in demand that's, that's driven from that uh, global connectivity, we're starting to see capacity constraints on our subsidy systems, a, a global capacity constraints. And it's not just Telstra that's experiencing that, that's an industry challenge. Um, but it's something that as you know, some of these subsidy systems have been delayed over the years of actually landing, it's created capacity constraints um, for the first time I think that we've ever experienced. And so, um, Dealing and identifying those challenges and figuring out a way to mitigate those is incredibly important to us. We, uh, we invest heavily in those systems and in, in, in not only new systems, but augmenting the old ones so that we can squeeze every drop of capacity out as we can. Um, and then as new entrants come into the market uh, in terms of demands and, and new competitors and new players, we all kind of need to figure out a way to work together to best serve the, the rapidly evolving needs of the workplace. So when new technologies come online, things like satellite or low earth orbit, you know, we're, we're very an active part or partner in many of those conversations um, so that we can continue to you know, build out a robust portfolio that's that designed for remote locations, that's designed for um, customers who may not be right next to a data center. We still need to be able to serve those needs. All right, so obviously those are some of the company's challenges. What about industry challenges? Yeah, so as we see new technologies emerge, it's starting to become a siloed effect. Uh, you know, there are so many different needs that uh, new entrants have developed solutions for. It's really important that the industry continues to coalesce together. Um, we, need to, we need to cooperate and partner to solve a lot of these challenges because no one's going to be a one-size-fit-all approach, and Telstra recognizes that. And that's why we lean on our partners and, and, and the expertise that they bring, and we hope that we can bring a level of expertise as well, and together we can serve the end needs of the customer. Uh, any advice for the international channel partner base? Yeah, continue to use Telstra. Continue to lean on us um, for those for that expertise in Asia. You know, it, the channel is an important part of our business. We've recently hired Makoto um, Anzai, who's our new head of channel, and she's going to be driving a lot of the initiatives go forward. Um, we've also started to build out our partner program in a way that makes it mo the most frictionless experience possible, both for our partners and for their end customers. So. I would say when you think Asia or you think uh, hard to reach places like China, think Telstra and um, you know, lean on the expertise that we can serve. So where can people go online to learn more about Telstra and everything that it has going on? Yeah, the best place is www.telstra.com backslash Americas. That's our Americas specific landing page. And from there, you can get anywhere you need to, to access the resources. Oh, fantastic. Thank you so much for the time today. I appreciate it. Thanks a so well. lot. And uh, on behalf of Telstra and Channel Vision Magazine, CVTV, live from Channel Partners.